Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my another video and in this video we are going to talk about what is the right stack you should choose for your next project. Let's say you are building a SaaS product, you are building a small POC, how you should select the, the right backend, right frontend and the database stack, stack stack for your project. I mean I'm going to primarily talk about JavaScript world here. I mean, you have lots of other things like, if you, let's say, if you are building a product, you can use Python, PHP, .NET, Go, Ruby. But my stack, which I'm going to correlate, is going to be uh, around JavaScript only, because that is what we are talking. In JavaScript, there are lots of things uh, and uh, lots of uh, tooling, lots of framework, front end, back end, uh, and uh, lots of things are there when you explore the toolings and all. So you might get confused. Okay, what should I use? for my next project which i'm going to deploy on aws azure maybe digital ocean on or in on heroku and my clients are going to use that so how should we choose the technology not by just saying okay i know this i know that and i can just do it in that so what are the factors which you should consider before building a product okay so i will tell you a story I was writing a simple application and that application I can simply write in react. Let's say I choose a framework react. So if you are choosing a framework, then you also need to consider that whatever the developers you have in your team, they already knows about it, right? Because it's all about whenever you are choosing any framework or any stack or any technology, the, the, the first important thing you should look for is do you have that expertise in, in your uh, in-house? Like in your developers, do you have expertise or they need to get it? So that's always a challenge. Let's say I started doing it in Django or some Lambda and people don't even know what is Lambda or I choose, let's say, Swell Kit. And I have expertise uh, developers in the next CS and React. So that is the, the most important thing. And if you talk about the stacks, I mean, you might have heard about Mean, Mern, Pern, XXX. So I am not talking about those frameworks because it's all about you just mix four things and you build a new stack but these are not a framework or any kind of a stack name it's all javascript and how we are deciding okay we choose one front-end framework we choose one back-end framework and we build a stack so in that case i can just create a n number of uh, permutations combinations okay so what we are going to do is let's say i'm going to create a simple layer here okay so we need we are dividing the whole thing into three chunks okay front end back end and in the cloud which is okay your development deployment environment or whatever you wanted to do because now clouds like aws provide you whole infrastructure and whole developer tools and everything so here you can pick the front end framework where you uh, have an expertise let's say i'm just saying is okay this is the front end framework and this can be anything i have a good expertise on react angular vue.js angular vue.js react and uh, are you forgetting something angular js vue.js react and svelte Right. These are like a front-end CSR framework, client-side rendered framework. And there is already, already a copy of this if you want to do a server-side rendering. And for that you have a Vuex. I think there is a Nuxt is a framework name. And this is a Next.js. Angular Universal if you want to use. Or Svelte Kit. These are the framework which are available if you are doing a server side rent. So this is also another important question before you build a product. What is the target audience? Do you want a web application for your product? If yes, then only go to this path. Otherwise, you can stick to your web platform because what happens is sometimes people want a all kind of platform. They also want a web appearance and then they also want uh, uh, applications, apps and apps you can already know that there are now platform available which can build your applications for ios and android both <clears throat> i'm talking about react native so this is the front end framework which is including client side rendering and server side rendering 
now i will try to extract the tech stack from all these things let's say my now my all possible stacks which i can get from this is i will try to write something on the top i'm just trying to find some space we can utilize so i will try to extract the stacks from this okay first stack is i just use a react client side rendered and then just express app now for the database there are multiple options right even for this back end this is your front end now we are talking about the back end here we can just use express or nest.js right there are many other framework available so you will pick something from here i will talk about them koa.js happy.js nest.js express okay these all these are back end framework and then there comes the database stack and in database i will just create a two major categories okay one is the cloud managed let's say first of all let's say mysql postgres mongodb dynamo db cosmos db these are cloud database dynamo and uh, cosmos but if you can see these are this is a sql and this is a no sql database now you just choose one framework pick one item from here and there and it will give you the new stack altogether right and there is one more layer we need to add i will just try to shrink this a little bit so we can manage more things inside here i'm talking about the cloud because it's not like okay uh, you need cloud to deploy the application you can use like amplify lots of other tools also available which can make your application a little bit faster so i mean the development uh, experience easy i think using amplify you can do everything similarly the azure might be providing something and lambda for the apis or you might use a netlify vercel i mean the cloud where you are deploying the application deployment platform you can say okay digital ocean heroku and all so now you choose one one from each stack okay react client side rendered i use express app or and then i choose mongodb this is the favorite stack for lots of people because it's easy and lots of tutorial and all the content is available around this this we they started calling mon stack mongo express node and all right there is nothing like that i mean you can call something now here you can start changing things and start playing okay react i can just change this to angular and currently we are talking only about client side rendered and you wanted to change the text stack and instead of this you wanted to use postgres okay then you decided to use altogether a different framework which is svelte js csr this is till now we are good okay but then i later decided that i wanted to use ssr then i started exploring the concept of svelte kit this is ssr from the vue js sorry uh, svelte js and there is a next js because with the react if you want to use a uh, ssr in react js then you can use next js for that and then similarly here you can do the permutation and combinations of the different framework express nest js rp koa so you can see the permutation and combination we have like a uh, four framework here four four different framework here and two two or three different type of databases a cloud a managed database and sql and no sql database so what are the popular ones i will talk about them because express is a popular framework so developers tend to learn uh, express with the typescript and then either they know react or either they know angular and they just end up building the product that is all about the web development but when it comes to uh, let's say ios and android then what stack you will choose here also we can just make a combination this is sixth and here we will i will use a react native because we are talking about javascript and in react native you can build the 
application that can be used for iOS and Android. That can still can be in this permutation and combinations. You can use a MongoDB, Postgres, MySQL. And all now these cloud environments also providing some uh, uh, components like AWS Amplify that can be used to deploy your front-end applications even host your application platform and all right so this so similarly the other uh, cloud providers also providing something and other than that if you are not using AWS Azure then you can use a Netlify Vercel and all those things this is all about when you are deploying application as a web app now it's all about the what kind of expertise you have if you are just looking for just a client facing application don't, don't not worried about much on the performance then you can just use a csr express apis with the typescript but typescript is a must okay don't skip the typescript either you are writing a front end or front end or a back end always use react with the typescript vue.js with the typescript and back end apis in the typescript okay and then you can choose your sql or no sql database based on the use case postgres is really works fine and when you are using all these libraries you will also add ORMs so I can use uh, Mongoose, Type ORM, Prisma right? these are the ORMs which we will need based on the database we are using like if, you are, if I'm using DynamoDB I will be using DynamoDB Mapper from the AWS all these different libraries so these are not stacks don't keep calling them okay these are like some stacks these are like just permutation and combination of the things which we are doing on the front and back end and in the database side and we are just creating the different stack we have a Vue.js, React, Angular all these different framework back end we have a Koa, Happy, Nest.js Express uh, and you can just use Nest.js with the TypeScript obviously it comes with the TypeScript Express with the TypeScript and if you are deploying your application as a lambda then i would suggest make application as a serverless because that is a backend front end can be deployed on uh, simple heroku or you can just deploy it on the netlify get by domain on uh, your godaddy and deploy that as a uh, simple that's a csr application but when it is a ssr server side rendered application then you need a server right it's like an express app which is rendering your ui so you need a Vercel or you use a AWS Lambda for it. And the APIs, APIs can be deployed on AWS, uh, Elastic Beanstalk, you can create a Lambda, independent Lambda. So that comes because building the application is easy, but when it comes to the deployment, we need to choose a stack. So do you have expertise on AWS components? Yes, let's use AWS Lambda. People know a little bit on serverless. Let's try AWS Lambda because my application is not that super heavy going to get traffic from millions let's build a lambda for it and uh, i already know no node.js i need uh, to learn a little bit i can build an api lambda and then that lambda can talk to your aws postgres database or aws rds or you can just create a dynamo db tables if uh, that's not a very big complex logic otherwise you get a aws rds uh, and uh, deploy your application on aws ec2 instance so uh, AWS provide uh, hand ready tools. I mean, you don't need to go to create all these servers and all. You can just set up a CI CD. Here we are talking about stacks, not about the actual implementation of the product and CI CD deployment, development and all. But these are the different stacks. You can still use React Native to build application for Android and iOS, Express app with the TypeScript for the APIs, MongoDB or Postgres MySQL for your backend. And you can deploy this app as a Lambda that Lambda will still uh, expose the AWS API Gateway URL, which you can provide to your mobile app to interface. So that all depends on the architecture, but it's all uh, currently we are talking about the defining the stack. If it is a web app, mobile app, what are the backend framework you can use, what are the database you can use, and you can just name the different different stack. Even you can also use a Neo4j if you need a graph database. You can use a Swellkit, React, Next, Express app or Nest.js app and here you change the database to Neo4j. So it's totally independent, different stack. You can name it XYZ. And uh, there are popular terms which is being used on the TRPC stack, right? Because currently all this communication between client and server. So this is your client. This is my client. This can be anything. It can be your mobile device or your web app running on the Chrome browser. And these are your server because at the end we are having these two layers. 
right all the communications currently in the previous uh, i mean in the current session we are talking rest apis but then you can also bring a variety okay i'm i can use a graphql rest or it can be a trpc interface it can be grpc so all these are also uh, you you will take decision based on how you want to build your application there will always be a two tier or three tier i mean you can also have a middleware where you are doing authentication authorization but basically two tier inside two tier you have a client that can be mobile app that can be a desktop uh, app electron app even i mean client is a client it can be a mobile app and some there may be some requirement where you are actually using building a desktop app using electron or some framework that is going to be installed like a slack or a vs code and that is going to interface with your api's platform okay so this is your api platform and now this communication between this these things because all these things can be written in javascript typescript you can use electron javascript typescript framework uh, react native javascript typescript framework or uh, there is a angular framework for mobile ionic or uh, you are just writing a web app in react vue js or maybe in ssr or csr framework you will be communicating to the backend apis that can be written that can be exposing an interface either rest graphql grpc trpc or something but this is like a backend interface for you okay so backend will be talking to your front end responding the request and and the data which it is storing that can be anywhere right it can be using a mysql mongodb all different uh, layer so this is a database layer and your server is going to talk to the database for persisting the information save up, create update delete and it can be a sql database no sql database any kind of complex architecture you can adopt so this is all about the stack stack these stack mean mern pern please don't use those names i also use them but this is all about doing the variation and based on your team expertise you can just use a next js next auth uh, in the back end you can use a prisma as a orm you can write a next js services or just write everything in this uh, uh, next js app you can do everything in a single app that's all that also depends how you want to write are you writing a single monolith you can just use a simple next js app and build the apis right itself or you can use a microservices where you have a big product and you can uh, segregate the domains let's build a microservices so that's all about how we define these stacks which are uh, roaming around everywhere on this uh, on the on the web mean mern or i don't know the names people call them but that's only about changing things changing the the client side framework doesn't make it a new stack okay so we are and the different communication strategy if i'm talking to uh, to the server in the rest and if i change that to the graphql it's not going to change the stack it just only you change the interface okay so that's all about it i'm covering lot more content around the same microservices and all so uh, stay tuned i will be posting more videos